this is where we are. It's pretty dry. It's pretty, 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 pretty. dry. And I was just tacking some blocks down. So what are you working on surface wise? Oh, uh, good question. I have a two inch piece of hard insulating foam, which um, comes from Lowe's or Home Depot or, you know, a hardware store. Okay. And um, if you don't have that and you have a felting mat or stab it, wab it, or, you know, you can, you can move the piece around on a smaller surface. Um, it's just, it's kind of nice to have a big, big surface that you can, you know, stab anywhere and you're ready to go. It's extra noisy in the stabbing department, <laughs> so I figured people might wonder. So this is a great time to use your punch tool. You know, if there's places that you really want to tack down, the punch tool works great. But I wanted, I wanted to show you everything that's left from the kit. Um, it's about three or four ounces, um, which if you exclude flat mat, is still about half your fiber. Um, you would probably, if you wanted to make a second project, you would need flat mat, and you would definitely need those three um, initial colors, the um, natural olive and tartan. Um, and I mean, you might have to be a little more selective about you know how you use the rest of this, but you're, you're, you're left with definitely left with plenty of fiber. So I want to pick out some things that I'm going to be using more specifically um, for my fox. So I'm getting out these sort of foxy colors. We still have a couple of pieces of blends. Yeah, you want those. You want those. A little bit of this dark in case I need it. Mohair. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of wax. Here's a little gray. Um, I did not mix and should make a, um, a gray, a couple of grays because I know I'm going to have to work on the face. All right. I really just want to get rid of all the locks and stuff. Leave the rest over here. So you're keeping the purples, whites. I'm pretty much done with greens. Um, gonna keep out colors that I might use on the fox. But I'm pretty much done with the locks. The only reason you might need a green or a sky is if you needed to sharpen up, um, sharpen up an area around the fox. So for example, if I didn't like this this line right here, I could I could take a nice light sky color and and you know put it right up against there and sharpen that up. But I'm I'm actually and I've had to do that. Um, I've gotten where the heads just sort of spread out and I wanted to tweak them tighter again. Um, but I, I actually like this and I like this. This is the mohair. Um, in the rough of his neck here, and I love the way it gets all curly like that. So generally what I've been doing is just punching up details on, um, on the fox's face, and I think we'll just go ahead and do that. You know what I need is my, I need my reference picture, definitely. Okay. Face is pretty good already. <laughs> Those of you out there, don't don't be troubled if your face doesn't quite look like that. So much can be done. I'm always thinking everyone's like, hers is great, mine is crap. That is how I feel when I work <laughs> on my projects. Oh. So we're gonna get down to like really small amounts of fiber. Um, little details, you can, you can really do a lot. I mean, you can, you can get as particular with this as you'd like to. Um, 
I try to not get super, like, I do feel like the, um, here, Milo, come over here. I do feel like the um, needle felted parts look different, a little different than the wet felted parts, so just keep that in mind. It will look a little different. So I'm just busting up some black for the nose, trying to make it as small as possible so that when I stab it on, I'm using my needles to ultimately shape it a little bit more as it goes on. I feel like the whole thing is shaking. Is it shaking? It's funny, I don't know how I ended up with this dark chestnut here. Not the right color. I have a lot of tweaking to do. I ended up like all huge and vague, so I'm gonna try and get that. I really too. Uh, do you think you have to hold it? Yep. <laughs> I just get to sit Why? even closer. Why? To you. It's it's a little distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it shaking? I mean, I'm not like you're moving the whole table. I'm not. We got to get that on the floor. Some I don't know what we need to do. Was, so. We're so professional. He's looking really foxy already. I like under his chin here is a it's a little lighter spot, but it's pretty warm. So I need my amber. And then maybe a little bit of purple just to shade it up. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I'm mixing a, a warm gray to go under his chin, and I'll probably end up using it in a few spots. And then, like I said, you might either need to break or cut the fiber smaller to make it go where you want to go. I mean, I, I try to avoid running everything, you know, in a long fibery direction. I try to get things to have fringy edges to, um, to blend them together because whenever you run something, a fiber in a, in a length, it's going to have a very distinctive edge and we want a lot more kind of subtle color changes here.
somewhere I had mixed. I probably used it, but I just want a nice bright white. But that's what that's what's in here. I got a little polluted by this orange. But a little nice bright white coming off the chest here. loud isn't it it's a little noisy and <laughs> I just think maybe more just if you look at the uh, cord here as you stab you'll see it goes shake shake put a little brighter white on the parts of the muzzle that the sun might be seeing. It's got a little more chin here than I have, so I'm going to add that. And then I start popping highlights um, where I see them, like right at the rim of the eye here. So people should have the reference picture in front of their face. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Now they're watching this and they might need like their phone with the reference picture on it. <laughs> you have to have all your devices out so that you can see what the heck we're doing. At this point, your piece could look different and need will look different and oh, will need will. different tweaking. So this they all look different. You're, you're not necessarily doing this. You're doing right. what your piece needs. What you need. It's very small amounts of fiber that we're working with right now. So you're looking for the brighter spots and the darker spots. Yeah, I usually try and start with what's darker and then work towards what's brighter. So people just keep mixing, mixing their mixes and getting the right. Yeah, I'm looking at the fox and then I'm looking at my picture. I feel like the fox is maybe a little more um, challenging than the hummingbird in this, in this part. But Foxes can, foxes have such a general um, kind of look to them that they can be fairly stylized and like, you know, really look cool. So if, if you're not getting the same amount of, you know, realism or detail or 
that's okay. It's going to be, it's just going to have a slightly different vibe to it. Just trying to sharpen up this line. And I might bring just a little bit of white into the edge here to neaten that up. So I have this light blend here, and if I cut a sharp edge, so I can either lay it this way to get along that line, or I can cut it, and then that also gives me a clean edge. And then the fringe goes out into the sky. tool here. Okay. lightness up here. I think I'm going to cut this too because it's just a real small little ridge of grayed out light on top of his head. Got a little bit of deep, deeper colors. What kind of deep colors do I have over here? So you have some brown and the dark some mix. Some brown and a little bit of the dark mix that I have. It's mostly brown. Just kind of coming up in here. Um, this guy, I'm pretty happy with all this. Like on my other one, I, I messed with that a lot, but really it's just the, just the face here. I'm trying to tweak a little bit. Sometimes you can tease things into place, you just have to be careful on your needles. I wonder how the reverse needles would work, pulling, you know, pulling some stuff out maybe. Be pretty cool to try that. The lights and the darks and the brights makes it go from flat to kind of give it more dimension to your mm -hmm. eye. Yeah, exactly. You're you're creating 
the the form, you know, the roundness and the So by adding this C shape of light color right here, I'm creating that that cheek. And then he's got some pretty good RNG highlights in there. So you're pulling some of your light light mix and the medium mix. Yeah. I might have to cut this because it has some silk in it, but let's see. It's such a small amount of fiber. I think we get in trouble when we try to get too much, you know, because you just you just don't need you don't need that much to make a big difference. And then you're trying to figure out how to stab it on and where it goes and Hmm. I want to get a little bit of a lighter color down in here, but it's muted, so it doesn't have to be super bright. So I'm taking um, a Marrakesh and Ash and a little bit of that mix that I had. Cut it, make it easier to blend here. dull. It's a little low, but that's okay. Low relative to um, the eye, but not 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 too far out of whack. I feel like this ear fringe here is pretty important, so I'm gonna brighten that up with a little bit of amber. I guess I can mix in this. I sort of got it with the wet felting, but I feel like it can be better. All right, so it's really just a little highlight on the nose and the eye details. There's a little dark spot in here I want to get. Kind of, it's like a fox dimple.
so my eye is almost entirely black but I just see a little bit of amber towards the back of the eyeball so I'm using a one of my brighter orange mixes that I already had like I said it is a small small amount probably too much even is my head in there? nope I am way zoomed okay now she has a pen tool but it only has two needles in it yeah so I can I can target you might need to you might need to use um, a single needle and now I'm pulling a little bit of a lighter brighter color that I want to put towards the front of the eyeball here and this fox's eye is a little it's a little tricky it, sometimes it's looking over to the left at me <laughs> like at the viewer and sometimes I get it to where it looks like it's looking forwards but I um, having a hard time controlling that switch to the single needle here so I can really push this fiber around and get it exactly where I want it to be now I'm going to take my dark up into the top of the eye I'm just going to get some black because his 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 little eyeball is a little bit hooded by his brow and if you've got the um, gold going all the way around that it makes him look surprised and like he's got his eyes that's what's wrong with mine like crazy wide open yeah well something you can play around with And then of course we want that white dot in there. So in this case, I'm putting it a little forward in the eyeball because um, I feel like the sun is hitting it on the forward side, not on the backward side. rim on the um, edge of the nose so believe it or not reflections are often sky colors so I took a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of purple and I'm just mixing them together Often on reflections on black, I'll, when I'm painting, I'll dance around teals and rust colors. They work well to create that shine. It's just not quite black on top of the nose. People are having a lot of fun with the um, 2D portraits, you know? Oh, yeah. something really neat that mm -hmm. paint doesn't, paint doesn't do. do. I'm not 
crazy about this hard edge here. Let's see if I can. deepen right there a little bit. I would say one of the main takeaways, if you will, is keep blending yeah. and blending to get just that right Shade. The more variety you have, the more realistic. Realistic it looks. Yeah, take your time with this and you know enjoy it. I'm I'm not rushing exactly, but I'm you know I'm aware that I'm shaking the table and, <laughs> and making, you know, making a video and um, trying not to. We can't, we can't fill up all of YouTube. Right. Try as we might. This outermost edge of the lip should be light. Not, I've got, I'm, I'm getting kind of a dark effect from my wet felting that was underneath, but I feel like this should be on the light side. What do you think? How does it look in the how does it look in the uh, screen? I think it looks pretty good. Here, let's do a little flip flip around. Look at that. Oh, it does look pretty good. Cool. I think I just shook the table too. <laughs> pretty nice. I'm gonna highlight this ear. Get a little get a little golden rim around this ear. Look cool. Like the sun is saying, Hello, I light you up. And right here didn't quite get this, the punch that it needs right here. <laughs> Thanks, Milo. Sure. We did. We did well. It, yeah, okay. that's that was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but a lot of fun. That looks really good. Yeah, I just it's fun having. I have three here, and it's cool to see how um, different they they just. They just all turn out different, and there's a lot you can do, especially with the sky choices, pretty simply. Um, so I hope you guys had a good time with it and get excited about more 2D, whether it's wet felting or needle felting, because we definitely want to do more. And you can share your projects and your 
any kind of felting news on um, Serafina Felting Fanfare on Facebook. That's our group. Very supportive. If you have any questions too, great, um, great group of people there to help answer them. Anything else to add? I, I think this might be the first tutorial I did not tell one joke. Yeah, what's going on? I, I don't Slacker? Know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm feeling very dignified. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's okay. We'll get back to it. We'll get back to it on the next one. Right. Well, Fox, Fox are very, you know, British, and, and they're dignified. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll talk to our, to our friends in the UK about that and yes, see if that's accurate. Very, <laughs> very dignified and Fox-like. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Take care. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye.